Hello YouTube, I am your host, Chris Rock Solid. Welcome to another episode of Tales of Nerdia. As I mentioned in my first two videos, I've been eagerly awaiting the latest installment to the Tales series by Bandai Namco titled Tales of Zestiria. Came out just over a week ago. Uh, not only is the Tales series the inspiration behind the name of this very channel, but several of its installments are among my favorite RPGs of all time. Uh, maybe later down the road I'll do a top 10 uh, of my personal favorites. But I digress. In this video, I'll give you my initial impressions of Tales of Zestiria based on the first about 10 to 15 hours that I've played so far. Let's begin. The first thing you need to know about this game is it's going to start very slowly. There's a lot of walk to this, cutscene, uh, talk to this person, cutscene, fight five monsters, cutscene, take three steps to the left, cutscene, cutscene, cutscene. Do you get the point? It's tough to endure, but there is a light at the end of the tunnel. We'll get to that shortly. The first few hours mainly serve to introduce some characters, the basis, basics of combat, uh, they build the world and uh, gives you a glimpse of the story, which so far is pretty much, uh, oh, every once in a while evil appears. And when it does, a hero appears too, and he's called the Shepherd. He makes all the bad guys go bye-bye. And then the Shepherd goes bye-bye too. Uh, now, of course, the stories in Tales games, while not being the true draw to the series, are known for changing very dramatically through several twists. That's a tongue twister itself. Uh, with that being said, this has to be the most basic, unoriginal start to date. Uh, they even have a cliché sword in the stone arc, King Arthur style, uh, that I was so bored uh, at I considered skipping cutscenes, uh, but I decided not to. The lack of interesting characters, though, that we start with doesn't really help fuel the fire to continue. We have uh, our hero, Sore. He's the naive, innocent hero destined to save the world. Miklio, the sassy sidekick, and Alicia, the princess in need of some saving, and maybe a longer skirt, too. Uh, one redeeming quality that Miklio has is he belongs to a race called the Seraphim, who only Soray can actually see and hear. So they're very interesting. I'm, I'm curious to learn more about them. And I realize, though, that so far it sounds like I hate this game. Stay with me. I, I really don't. As you progress through the game, you're, you are given some hints that there's more to being a shepherd than just saving the world. Uh, we also get to meet several of uh, the Seraphim, more of them, who truly steal the show. And you get to know these characters through optional skits, a main pillar of Tales games, that breaks their surface level agendas, gives them more depth. And the skits provide details of the characters, just silly things like their hobbies, uh, gives you a little more of their background, whatever, just things that you don't get out of other games. Uh, they even add a good sense of humor as well. Uh, at this point, though, I would still argue that the Seraphim are much more interesting than Soray and Alicia combined. There is much more to Tales of Zestiria than just a story filled with archetype characters. Uh, after all, this is a video game, not a book or a movie, so it's important how it plays, and the combat is the number one reason anyone would call themselves a Tales fan. Uh, Zestiria definitely delivers a fun and interesting combat system. It ditches the floaty aerial style juggling of its predecessors, Exilia 1 and 2, which I still enjoyed, uh, and it swaps it out for the ground-based combo system more reminiscent of Tales of Grace's F, which happens to be my favorite in the series. The official name of the combat system is the Fusionic Chain Linear Motion Battle System. Sounds complicated? Well, it is. I'm not going to go into full detail on how exactly it works. Here's a few main points. As you can see, it's not turn-based, it's real-time combat. Once you encounter an enemy, a circular battlefield will generate on the map. You can run around and fight enemies using a combination of arts. There's several different kinds. One type, martial arts, meh, get it. Martial arts are mapped to one of your attack buttons and they belong to a predetermined combo tree which is what you're seeing right now. So what this means is the first time I hit the attack button, I'm gonna do an attack based on the first column here. And it depends on what direction I'm holding the analog stick. The second time I hit the attack button, I'm gonna do an attack from the second column and so on and so forth. You see there's four columns, so that's four attacks and a combo and there's ways to chain combos together, but you get the point. 
Uh, anyways, you can't customize where these attacks are, this is just how it is. There's another kind of art called Hidden Arts, which is mapped to your second attack button. You're going to learn plenty of these throughout the game. You could choose your favorites, map them to the directions, uh, your attack button plus the direction you're holding your analog stick, and pick your favorites or the, uh, you know, the most powerful, however you want to do that. Now, button mashing and spamming certain attacks, it'll get you a little far with weak enemies, but as you progress and fight stronger opponents, guarding and evading and using uh, quick steps, these things become essential to surviving and defeating your opponents. You're also going to need to time your attacks to uh, get past and break your enemy's defenses to set up good combos. The newest addition to the battle system that sets it apart, though, uh, from the other series is Soray's ability to fuse with the Seraphin on his team. Uh, so not only does this combine the stats of both characters, but it grants you access to new abilities. And it's the perfect weapon against enemies that are weak to specific elements like water, fire, and earth, because all of these seraphims so far that I've encountered are associated with one of those specific elements. And there's plenty of other features to tinker with to enhance the gameplay, such as battle actions. Uh, battle actions are special abilities you earn through special means, like using guard a hundred times, or using evade a hundred or a thousand times, so you'll get more battle actions. Uh, the Lord of the Land menu lets you use, uh, as you earn points or grade from battle, uh, you gain access to several upgrades you can uh, equip to certain areas of the map uh, that give you conditions such as treasure chests refilling over time, uh, there's plenty more. We have titles you could equip to gain arts that you level up. You can level up stores uh, by purchasing more, which gives you access to better equipment, and, and so much more. But the one I really want to talk about is fusing equipment. I'm going to ramble a bit, so bear with me here. Each piece of equipment not only boosts your stats uh, like attack and defense like any other game, but each equipment carries up to four skills. When you fuse pieces of, of equipment with the same name, you create a stronger version of that equipment with increased stats, and you can also pass along skills or even combine skills to create more beneficial skills. Skills on skills on skills. Anyways, there's 50 skills available that are mapped out on the skill sheet that you see in front of you. When a certain pattern is fulfilled on this skill sheet, you can unlock bonus skills. And I know it sounds a bit convoluted, but it creates a sense of depth and customization that I could personally spend hours on. You could see here I have the first column filled out. I have a skill of each element in the first column. Uh, they're flashing there because I gained a bonus skill from that. And they have names like G, G Union, not G Unit, G Union and E Union. Uh, when you get those bonus skills. I have another one here where I stacked my skills, uh, the, the other one that's flashing there, and I got a bonus from that instead. And uh, so instead of going to a new town, buying new equipment each time you go to a new town, like a standard RPG, the fusion system gives weaker equipment the potential to be more useful for a longer period of time. And each piece of equipment also has a uh, proficiency level to it, one through five. So battling with that item equipped, or that equipment equipped, increases your proficiency level with it. And some skills on your equipment won't be unlocked until you gain enough proficiency with that equipment. Finally, by increasing your proficiency, if you decide to fuse that equipment later, it will cost you less money. The important thing to keep in mind, though, is that the result of your fusion does not gain any perks based on the proficiency level of its building blocks. That sounds super scientific. I'm not going to explain it anymore. you got to figure it out yourself. Uh, anyways, I'm running a bit longer than I had planned. I'm going to cover the last two points very quickly. Excuse the lack of a detailed explanation. Voice acting. After just completing Uncharted Drake's Fortune, which had awesome voice acting, uh, Compared to Zestiria, there's no way I can call the voice acting anything more than mediocre in Zestiria, but honestly, that's pretty much what I expected based on the previous games. Uh, essentially, it comes down to uh, the emphasis being placed on the wrong words, just the overall tone 
of the delivery of each line. It's not the voices themselves, it's just how they're delivering their lines that is just um, not fantastic. Uh, I'll probably do my second playthrough in Japanese. Warning, weeaboo alert! Anyways, open world. The open world, uh, a lot of emphasis was placed on this by Bamco and the media. Uh, Zestirius has this vast open world, yada yada. And I do find it more open and prettier to look at than previous entries in the series. Uh, I wouldn't say it's anything groundbreaking. It's new-ish to the Tales series. But if you've played any Western RPG this gen or last gen, you're not really seeing anything too new here. Okay, time for a summary. Overall, I'm thoroughly enjoying my experience so far. It took me about three to four hours to really get into this game and start enjoying it. And I know there's still a lot to the story that I haven't experienced. Hopefully that will cultivate into something more entertaining. Uh, most of the characters, specifically the Seraphim, are becoming more intriguing through the optional skits and as I progress the story. But most importantly, the combat is fun. Combining a good defense with a combo-heavy offense just makes each battle satisfying. Uh, the extent of configurations to outside of battle, like battle actions and fusing equipment, provides so much depth that just begs to be experimented with. Uh, so based on my experience of the first 10 to 15 hours, I would say if you're a fan of JRPGs or the Tales series in general, uh, it's definitely worth your time. Check out Tales of Zestiria. I'm excited to see what else it has in store, and I will definitely be making more videos on this game, uh, solely this game. So, this has been the third episode of Tales of Nerdia. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please do not forget to share, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments section what you think of the game so far, or if you've beat it, how do you think it uh, ranks compared to the other Tales games. And if you haven't played a Tales game, go ahead and comment and tell me what the heck is wrong with you. Go play these games. Thanks, guys. See you next time.